Hi, we are interviewing Richard Anderson in Denver, Colorado at 931 Gallery. Hi, Richard. Hello. Tell us a little bit about how you got into art. Uh, I've always been a fan. I've always been interested in art. Um, my first memory of art would be doing art in school, uh, fourth, fifth, sixth grade, and coming home with a piece of art that I made in class and my dad immediately putting it up on the wall and seeing my work uh, on the wall that my dad thought was just the greatest thing uh, just really turned me on, like seeing my work hanging on a wall, even though it was poorly lit and it was, it was probably not that good. Uh, that's what I got into, I got into art. And, uh, you know, growing up poor, I feel like I got into a lot of interests that were really expensive, just, just to feel better about it. So art was, art's about the most expensive thing you can enjoy. So I, I, uh, I started my interest in art because of that. What's your background, both personal and professional? My background is that I, I uh, grew up in Eastern Iowa. Uh, I was born in Des Moines, grew up in Iowa City which is a, a very culturally diverse city, which a lot of people have a hard time believing in, in Eastern Iowa, but it's, it's a college town. Uh, I had uh, friends and neighbors growing up that were from all different parts of the world going to school. Uh, I uh, joined the military right out of high school and uh, kind of traveled around the world a little bit. And, uh, and so I saw a lot of art. Uh, I, I've been to, to galleries and museums all over the world and it, it just expanded my, my interest in art all the way, yeah. What ideas propel you to use the materials you do in your work? Uh, the materials, uh, well, I, I, I'm definitely attracted to uh, acrylic paint because it's so much easier to work with uh, than oil. Um, and and I, I always, I've always had this feeling that, that oil paint drove a lot of the artists in the 1950s crazy. Uh, because it was you know, you know, in, inhaling the fumes and all the, the different uh, thinners and stuff. So I, you know, acrylic is so much easier to work with. Um, but uh, in this particular body of work, uh, I, I manipulate the paint with industrial materials like, like window washing squeegees uh, because I, I wanted to eliminate, uh, I wanted to eliminate brush strokes. As much as I'm a fan of abstract expressionism of the 1950s and all the brush strokes, you know, the, the Franz Klein and the, the, uh, the Willem de Koonings, I didn't want my paintings to have brush strokes. I wanted, to, I wanted the, 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 the gesture to be a little, more, um, a little more mechanical. What about the compositions and the format of your work? What informs those decisions? Uh, the, the original concept of this work, the show is called Lakes and Rivers. And the original concept was to create uh, create paintings that gave the viewer a sense of, of flow, like water. Um, and so it's called Lakes and Rivers. However, as I was working on this series, I, I couldn't just stick to you know, water type colors, blues and, and whites. Uh, I, I, I just, I love color so much that I think the, the concept of flow is still there, but maybe less likely uh, the colors that are not necessarily associated with water. What would you like to do more of? More of these. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm experimenting with doing them bigger. Um, I've always said that that uh, large work is an experience and small work uh, is an object. And I wanted my paintings to be objects. I wanted them to be seen uh, by the viewer uh, all at once, where you can, you can take in the image and process it in your own way without having to look all over the place for it. Um, but I certainly could do this same format uh, larger and I, I am exploring that. Yeah. So this is kind of along those lines, but what do you want the viewer to take from your work? Uh, an excitement of, of the eye. Uh, uh, I, think it was, I think it was the, uh, the, the fashion writer, Diana Vreeland, that says the eye must travel. And I've found that the, the art that I'm the most attracted to is work that makes my eye move. And so I, I would hope that the viewer could look at my work and their eye keeps moving, you know, rather than, uh, oh, it's, a, it's a, a picture of flowers. And then you never look at it again. It's a, it's a picture of flowers. I, I think with, with this kind of work, I think you can look at it multiple times and see something new. So I, I want the eye to travel. Who are you the most influenced by? Uh, 
there's not a lot, I don't think there's a lot in my work that other artists or other viewers would think of immediately another artist. Now, you know, applying the paint with mechanical means, of course you can think of Gerhard Richter. Uh, growing up in Iowa, of course, my first favorite artist was Grant Wood. Everybody knows Grant Wood. Uh, I, I got into John James Audubon, something about those bird paintings I really liked. Uh, the first modern artist that knocked me out was, was, was definitely uh, Pollock. And then uh, I, I liked Rothko a lot. And then as soon as I started to, to look at artists like Joan Mitchell, and so that's where my work has a, a little bit to do with Joan Mitchell. She did a lot of uh, multi-panel paintings. Uh, she did multi-panel paintings, according to her, for a different reason than I do. She did multi-panel paintings because her studio was very small, and she couldn't paint a single large canvas, so she built them together. I do multiple panel pictures because I want them to be more of an object. I think there's a mechanical, there's a, there's a constructed uh, sense to, to canvases that you put together. And so these are all fused canvases together, and it gives it more of an object to it. Okay. Is there anything else you'd like to add before we close? No, just come on down and see my work. It's up until the 28th of April. And uh, with the exception of this coming Friday, I'll be here every, every day. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Good afternoon. We're here with Richard Anderson at 931 Gallery. He's showing in the gallery until April 28th, 2024. We're at 931 Santa Fe Drive in Denver at Suite 150. Hi, Richard. Hello. So tell us a little bit about this show. Okay, this show is called Lakes and Rivers, and uh, it is uh, work I've had uh, in my mind and have been working on for the last uh, about two years, and it features a bunch of uh, double paneled uh, acrylic on canvas paintings that I made uh, using a window washer squeegee. Uh, the concept of the work is uh, to create a sense of movement within a non-moving uh, surface. So um, it, it's about just the, the rhythm of, of watching a, a lake or a river of water flowing. Um, I, I got away from the, uh, the river or the water color of you know, blues and whites and silvers and grays and stuff because I just, I, I'm just always in love with color. So while, the, while the, the colors I chose were not necessarily water related, the, there's a flow. If you, if you look in close at some of these, um, you can see a sense of like looking down at a tide pool or, or watching the water go by a river. Uh, all the paintings have a, have a title reference to uh, lakes and rivers. So um, uh, that painting, for instance, is called Iowa River Power. Um, that's the, the Iowa River flows through the middle of my hometown back in Iowa. Uh, this painting is called Perfume River. Uh, all the titles have something to do with a lake or a river. So um, back in, in the, the, the back half of the gallery, I've got this is called uh, uh, Fire Lake uh, because it looks, it's got like the red, it, so that's called Fire Lake. This is called Norma's Pool. Uh, that's from the, the beginning of the, of the movie uh, uh, Sunset Boulevard when Norma shoots a guy and he falls into the pool and there's blood in the pool. So I thought that was kind of cool. Um, that's called uh, Love Canal. Uh, this is called Moselle, uh, named after the river in Germany, which is where I lived for a while when I was in the military. Uh, this is uh, called Greasy Lake. That's a title of, a, of, I think, a short story or a novel by, by a writer that I remember from years ago. Uh, this is called uh, Green River. And, and again, these, these have a sense of, of movement. I've always wanted to, to create work that the viewer's eye either moves or feels like it's moving or gets the sense of moving. That's called Blood in the, Blood in the Water, and this one's called Crystal Lake. Also in my show, I, I, had, uh, I put in a series of uh, small collages, which are, which are acrylic and collage elements on paper. Uh, I've, I've done quite a few of these. This is like my side project 
when uh, I feel creative, but I don't want to, you know, drag out all the materials and get make a huge mess. I can I can sit at a table and put these together, and uh, it's something that that I use to occupy my time. And after I made a few dozen of these, I realized that, that they were really enjoyable to make, and uh, I think the the result is very very interesting. And uh, and I, I I started creating these small collages because I wanted to try to give a sense of a larger picture, but in a small space. So, sort of like uh, uh, color field paintings, but with collages and also in a very small format. So that's the uh, that's the content of my show that's up at uh, nine thirty one gallery right now. Okay, thanks, Richard. Thank you.